This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by undefeated Leeds lightweight Justin Yule. Justin, how are you? I'm good, Danny. Yourself? I'm very good. Thank you. You've got a, a big fight coming up, uh, 25th of February, I believe, against Jimmy First yeah. for the uh, Central on... Area title. Uh, how, how are you feeling as camping? A week on Friday, yeah. You know, camp's gone good. Um, I'm sure, obviously, every fighter says the same, but this one, it's gone smooth. You know, we've had the correct sparring partners in there and we've been learning certain things. And now, we listen, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. Good stuff. Now, this is your first time on the channel, so let's start at the very beginning. How, how did you first get into the sport? You know what? what? When I was younger, I was uh, I used to do karate. Uh, I was a black belt first dan in karate. Hmm. And um, as I got to a certain age, as you do growing up, my, uh, my friends started to set the the piss out of me a little bit saying, oh, go on, look at you walking down there in your karate suit and all that. I think we're about 14. So like, all right. And I said to me, dad, I want to, uh, I want to do something a bit, a bit tougher. You know what I mean? A bit more full contact. And I said, all right, let's take you down to the local boxing gym. And uh, that was it from there. Went to the local boxing gym. I think I was 15 at this time. And then um, been here ever since. How did you get on as an amateur? How many fights did you have? So I had some unlicensed fights um, as an amateur. And then I had three ABA fights, one, two, lost one. And then oh. uh, turned over. Well, why did you decide to go down that route to, to mix the two rather than just stay amateur or just do unlicensed? What, in terms of obviously amateur or the unlicensed? Yeah, well, why did well? you do some of one and some of the other? I think I started off with the unlicensed stuff and then because I would know I was going to turn professional, obviously I had to have that, um, the, the background and the credentials behind me as well. So it would just quickly get a couple of fights so that the board can say that, yeah, you've had a few fights, you can look after yourself and, you know, turn over. What made you go into unlicensed initially? Was it just the gym you were training in did unlicensed? Yeah, just the gym when I first, yeah, just the gym when I first went in, that was kind of like their setup and, and what they'd done. What did you find to be the main differences between doing the unlicensed and the, the ABA stuff, like in the ring? In the ring, the ABAs is more obviously like counter-punching. It's a bit fencing, isn't it? You know, tactical, um, a lot more speed. Whereas the unlicensed stuff, you try to like, it's more like a professional fight. You know what I mean? You can slow it down a little bit. You know, you can try break your opponents down and you can put, you know, you try to get them out of there, are you? So what made you turn over at the point you did? Because you could have stayed, you know, unlicensed or amateur for a bit longer, got a few more under your belt. But what, why did you decide to turn over? I couldn't tell you, to be fair. Um, it's a long time ago. I think 2009, I had my professional debut. And um, just remembering back, I, I couldn't tell you. I think it was just at the time it, it felt all right. Fair enough. Now, you were doing really well. Um, you were unbeaten, as you still are now. And then 2015, you had, I guess we can call it bad luck now. Um, tell us a little bit about that. I don't want to tell your story for you. Yeah, no, you know what? You can't call it, it's not bad luck. You know what I mean? It was just one of them. I went down the, the wrong path, um, ended up serving a custodial sentence or going to jail for, you know, um, possession of drugs. And I don't know, it's a weird one because people actually say, oh, you know, basically you messed up there and whatever. But looking back now, it was the best thing whatever happened to me. What, and, why? and people look at pe people look at me daft and go, why? Because it made me grow up. It made me realise certain things. It made me want to change my mindset and want to achieve something different, you know. Um, and obviously since coming home, um, my main focus now has just been obviously my family and um, my boxing career. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of reported at the time that the reason you got into the trouble you got into, at least partly, was that you had um, issues with gambling. Now, yeah. is that something you ultimately got help with? Obviously, you couldn't really do that in prison anyway, but did you get help with that? Yeah, you, you know what? Being in prison brought the chain, if you know mm. what I mean. There was no local bookies or casinos to just go in and walk in, you know. So then when I come home, I obviously promised myself that I'd just never do it. I'd never go back to that situation again. And I never have since. You know, I have the odd bet on the boxing now and then or whatever, but nothing like I used to do before. 
how important was boxing during that time? Like, did you always have it in the back of your mind that it's something you could go back to? Yeah, no, it, um, it kept me focused, something to think about all the time. You know, when I was away, I got a gym orderly job. So I was always in the gym and around the gym. Um, so I kept my fitness and things like that and my strength work going. Um, and also, there's a little story here. Um, I have a friend in there, safe. Well, I met a friend in there, safe. Um, he's actually a boxing coach as well, out here now. He's doing quite well for himself. But he used to like, we used to make some like homemade pads. You know what I mean? Obviously in jail, and we used to go at the end of the corridor and do some pad work and whatever else. And he used to help me out, do little bits and bats, and that kept me going. You know, so people like that. You know, I owe a, I owe a lot to as well. And what's your training setup now? So who do you train with? Who do you do your sparring with? So now I am trained by a guy called Keith Walton. He also trains um, Zayda Sane. Oh, yeah. Um, and Ishmael Davis. So and in terms of sparring, it's just getting the sparring when as, as needed. You know, we do uh, travel around and, you know, I've sparred some good kids and it's just who's available at the time as well. Any kind of notable names that, that you've sparred with that you can tell us about? Oh, like going going obviously over the years and things like that. I've I've been in there with some good operators. Um, most recent times, I don't know. Been doing sparring uh, kid from Manchester called Adam Egg. Yeah, um, he he's a good kid. Uh, previously, I sparred people like you know Dalton Smith, you know people like that. You know, going back to when I was younger, I sparred Scott Quigg. Zelfa Barrett, um, Craig Watson, Commonwealth champion yeah. um, back in the day, you know. Um, just people like that, Carl Johansson, he were from British champion mm. down at Featherweight. You know, I've, I've been in there with some good names. Um, people on fringe world level, um, but a lot of British title holders and Commonwealth title holders as well. Do you ever kind of think that, you know, if you hadn't had that break, and obviously you said it was the best thing that happened to you, but do you think where you'd be in your boxing career now otherwise, because you're fighting for the central area, you could be, you know, yeah. British champion at least by now? Definitely. I do think that, but the mindset, what I had back then, would, would have been different. So you can never say that, you know, um, this is why, it, like, there's a lot riding on this fight as well, because obviously of where I've come from, what I've done and, and where I am now. You know, it's a big turnaround um, going from a life of crime to obviously now I'm fighting for the Central Area title. You know, it's a, a recognisable belt within the boxing well, within the boxing world. How much do you know about Jimmy First, your opponent on the 25th? We're actually pals. <laughs> you know, like, not like pals, pals, like we'd ring each other or whatever, but if I seen him, we'd sit down, we'd have a coffee together and yeah, we're friends, you know what I mean? But like we said, it's just strictly business when we're in there for that 30 minutes, you know. Um, obviously, I'm going to go in there and try to take his head off. He's going to do the same to me. But then after, you know, we'll be, you know, we'll be friends again. We'll probably share a pint or go for a bit of brunch or something like that. It's just one of them things. It's interesting. It's, a sport, start... it? it's, it, it's the business. You know, and that's what we said. It's strictly business. And if I'm honest, this is how boxing should be. There's no, there's no politics. There's no bullshit. And it's just a great 50-50 fight. What can this do for you if you do get the victory next week? Where, where will it put you on the domestic scene? Is it kind of then in frame for the English, for the British? Yeah, I'd like to think so, that I'd obviously get a shot at the English after. Um, and then maybe, who knows, you know, maybe get a shot at the British. When I turned professional, it wasn't to be a world champion. It was ultimately to win the British title. And with what's gone on in my life, in my career, I always thought like, you know, that's gone now. And then obviously now, if I win the Central Area title, you know, it's, it's possibly there, isn't it? You must feel pretty fresh for your age as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm 33 and I'm fitter, stronger and faster now than what I was when, when I was younger, than when I was 21, you know. And that's all mindset, training, different coaching. So, but yeah. 
And you mentioned your, your family earlier. I'm presumably you've got a family of your own. Have you got missus? You've got kids? No, yeah, two children. Um, so I'm a little boy. He's eight, Frankie, and a little girl, Libby, she's three. So these are the reason why I'm doing it, you know. I want to give them a better life if possible as well and hopefully secure a future out of it for them. Presumably the eight-year-old, at least, is pretty aware of what you do for a living by now. Like the yeah, no, definitely. He, he does a little bit of boxing. Uh, he goes down training, but because I, I know about the sport and, you know, how harsh it can be at times and, you know, how dedicated you have to be, I don't want him to do it. You know, I prefer him to do something else. Like, he's, he's quite a good golfer, and I hope he... I hope he uh, sticks with that and he goes down that path. Um, but I just, it's good for the kids to learn the boxing, the discipline and the training, the fitness and, you know, build a bit of strength there and the confidence as well. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't want him to fight. Fair enough. And for people that have never seen you box, how would you describe your style? Just a boxer, really. You know, when I do fight, I like to keep it long. Um, but I can also punch as well. So I've not got no rec uh, no knockouts on my record, but, you know, I, I can punch as well. I, I, I know that, you know what I mean? Um, and it's hard because, obviously, I've boxed a lot of journeymen, a lot of tough journeymen as well, you know, the best in, obviously, probably Britain. But you can't knock them guys out, do you know what I mean? The, the solid, the tough people, and in there, they're, they're doing their job as well. You know, they're making us work. But when you've got someone like like now, obviously, it's a genuine 50-50 fight against Jimmy. He's going to come forward as well. He's going to leave himself open. He's going to make mistakes. And that's my job to capitalise on that. And are you a, a full-time pro or do you work as well? Yeah, no, well, I work as well. Like, I have my own uh, mobile phone business. So we repair all, like, damaged, smashed phone screens, you know, iPad screens, things like that. Um and I have a business partner, but obviously he understands boxing is my main focus and goal. So um, it lets me work around training. So it's all right. I'm training. I'm training twice a day. So it's it's good. Great stuff. Now before I let you go, just tell people out there how they can find you on social media so they can find out a bit more about what you're doing. So you can get me on Instagram. It's Justin Newell 1989, and on Facebook as well. It's Justin Newell. Great stuff. Really, really appreciate your time. Very best of luck for the 25th. No, thank you, Danny. Um, at Ellen yeah. Road. I don't know if I mentioned where it was, but yeah, it's at Ellen Road. And yeah, look forward to, to catching up again after. Yeah, no, I'd just like to say a thank you. Well, we're on here, Danny, to obviously yourself, you know, for helping us, you know, it's a little bit of publicity out there because, you know, as fighters, that's what we need. And maybe I haven't got that kind of media attention in the past. You know, you see a lot of obviously fighters, sky fighters, the zone fighters, they all get a lot of the limelight, you know, and it's it's people like, say, me and Jimmy who are having a, a terrific fight here that gets a bit unnoticed. Well, I'll so, be speaking um, to Jimmy as well, you'll be glad to know, so. Yeah, no, yeah, so, no, but um, thank you and I appreciate it as well. No, anytime, mate, and yeah, let's do it again after the fight.